Hello, everybody. My name is Costas Hazi Christos, and I'm the head performance specialist for CSKA Moscow Basketball. I'm also the co-founder uh, of Performance 22 Lab, a rehab and training facility in my native Athens, Greece. I want to thank uh, Igra Perstram for putting together this uh, this great conference, and I'm really uh, and I want to thank Tatiana. Uh, I'm really honored to to be invited amongst uh, this uh, great panel of speakers, and uh, hopefully we're. We have the chance to talk about interesting things and learn a lot during this, those two, uh, two days. So my talk uh, today is going to be about exercise, of course, and we're going to approach exercise uh, and look at forces and how these affect uh, the effectiveness of safety of whatever we do. And we're going to uh, go through some basic, bio, uh, some basic biomechanics, probably things that we learned in, the, in our first year in the university. Uh, but we're going to put it in context and see how uh, certain details affect what we do, affect the effect, uh, affect the exercises that we do, their effectiveness and their safety. And we're going to talk about intelligence, intelligent training, thinking through what we're doing and really analyzing every angle of the exercise that we that we choose, how we execute, where the the, the force is coming from. Uh, you know, how can how can we make an exercise easier or harder and not just going through mindless, what I call mindless training, copying exercises or trying to create uh, functional, which is a buzzword the, the last few years or in, in complex exercises, but really stick to the basics. And we're going to see that, you know, by analyzing the basic and, and sticking to simple things, our training is going to be so much more effective. And in fact, you know, the more the more I get into the more I move uh, through the years, uh, in, you know, in, in coaching, I get back to even simpler and simpler and simpler things, but paying attention more and more and more to detail. Um, so we're going to be talking about moment arms and how uh, how these affect exercise. We're going to talk about what is, in my opinion, a true range of motion training. What do we mean when we say let's train a muscle or a movement throughout its true, true range of motion and we're going to talk about the importance of knowing where to apply force and it must say, all this sound a little theoretical so let's go back straight into practice so, and we'll talk a little bit about forces and the liver system which is very basic to understand and know uh, again I, I repeat that these are uh, simple concepts that we should have learned and we learn uh, early in our education, but we're going to revisit it with some examples. Okay, so every movement in the human body happens around a joint, happens around a joint, uh, and that joint is the actually the axis of rotation. Uh, the, of course, there is a, um, a limb involved or multiple limbs most of the time. And if we talk about weight training, there is certain mass at the end or somewhere which applies um, uh, force to the to the to the limb and causes torque to be created around the axis of rotation. Of course, the, the, the force that is always active in any weight, in any body that is on planet Earth, is gravity. And if we see here, you know, at the end of the, if, imagine this is your arm and this is a weight and this is your elbow joint, there is torque, there's forces, rotational forces and moments created around that joint that we call torque. And of course, uh, if we don't want that, that arm to fall straight down, pushed by gravity, uh, sorry. Sorry about that. Okay. Pushed by gravity. Then there's there's a certain muscle that needs to work in order to oppose that mass, oppose that oppose gravity, and maintain the stable position of the arm. Okay. So what we are really interested in is, is calculating the moment arm of the of the resistance force. Let's the, the moment arm of this force. Okay. And it's always going to be the perpendicular distance, always nine degrees of two lines. One line is the line of force, which is going straight through the, um, the mass over here. And the second line that's always going to be parallel to that line goes through the axis of rotations through that joint. So basically, we need the vertical, there's the perpendicular distance between those two lines, the line that goes through the joint and the line that goes through uh, the weight and goes straight down as we talk about, uh, as we talked about gravity. Okay. Now, a couple of things about the moment arms. Uh, the moment arm, as the more the moment arm, moment arm increases, okay, the, the bigger the moment arm, the bigger the torque around the joint. In fact, there's a general equation that kind of defines it. So torque equals moment arm times force. So how can you create bigger torque around the joint and hence cause more more muscle act, more muscle strength? Let's say if, if it's 
obviously is not a correct term. So how can you force the muscles to work harder? Okay, you can increase the, the moment arm, so hold the weight further or use more mass. Okay, so use more force. Uh, and hence, I, you know, I think it's Archimedes said that give me a lever long enough and I can move the world, meaning that the longer the moment arm, the more weight you can you can move. Okay, so torque is minimized. Torque around a joint is minimized when the line of force runs through the axis of rotation. If this weight, sorry, if this weight was here, okay, and those two lines were one on top of the other, then there's no moment arm and no force through the joint and we get equilibrium. And another thing, the torque is maximized. Torque here is going to be maximized when force is perpendicular to the segment just like here. Right. Let's go and look at some practical examples and go uh, into exploring some exercises and some concepts that we want um, to, to, to um, analyze. Okay, so here's my assistant, Pasha Gerasimov, and I thank him for being the model for this presentation. Uh, in panel A, you can see that the weight, those are two lines, the, the, the line that goes through the joint and the line of the force are one and the same because the weight is being held vertically right next to the body. The axis of rotation um, we will accept that is the, the elbow joint and on the elbow joint, okay? So here's the zero forces required to hold the weight, except, of course, of the grip of the, of the fist. Now, as the, as the weight starts being raised and the, the weight goes away from that line of the, of the joint, okay, and comes up, we can see that we are creating a moment arm, okay? So it's a little bit harder to hold than here, okay? Uh, and then when it's vertical, remember the perpendicular uh, concept that we talked about, okay? Now, if we accept that only the biceps and no muscles of the forearm, forearm are working and we, you know, concentrate on the bicep, now the moment arm is bigger, the distance between the weight and the joint of the axis of rotation is, is the biggest, and now the, the bicep needs to work the hardest. And as the weight is being lifted up, the moment arm gets smaller again, so it becomes a little bit a little bit easier to hold the weight. So we go from zero effort to more effort to maximal effort on panel C to again less effort effort on panel D. And this is kind of a general concept that we have to use uh, and to analyze any exercise that we are doing and figure out where is the hardest part, where is the easiest part, and where is the muscle actually not really working. Okay, so let's look at another example, which is a very famous and popular dumbbell ladder raise. We see again the athlete sitting here with a with a dumbbells right next to himself, and again the axis. Let me borrow my pen here. The axis of okay, the line that goes through the joint and the line that's not a very straight uh, line, but it's okay. Uh, and the line of resistance is the same. So the system is in equilibrium. Let's say now. The, the athletes start lifting the weight up, and look what happens. From here to here, let's go on this, on, on this picture right here, okay? So from here to here, the, we start creating a moment arm, okay? So let's say the dumbbell was here, and it, it's, it moves to the side. The moment arm is not very big, okay? But as the weight goes up, it becomes harder and harder, and it becomes the hardest over here horiz on the horizontal because it's perpendicular to the line that goes so okay through trying to make a straight line okay so over here is the line of the okay What's that? So I'll, I'll just draw it again but well, we get the idea that hello yes 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 hey, did it get cut Yes, we'll cut, no problem. Oh, no. Did it get cut or do you want to start again? Uh, from the second uh, picture, I think. Okay, so let me start from the slide. I'll start from the slide and we'll go straight through. Okay. 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 So let's take a look at a really popular uh, exercise that we most of us do, and it's the dumbbell lateral raise. And we can see here on the first picture, here's on the left, that we have again the athlete holding the dumbbell right next to himself. So the system is in, in some kind of balance because the line that crosses the, the, the joint, the center of rotation, the fulcrum, which is the 
we take it that is the shoulder and the line of the force are are parallel okay not only they're parallel but they coincide so it's one and the same so there's zero force required by the shoulder by the deltoid let's say let's accept that only the deltoid is working in this uh, movement of course it's not the only muscle working okay and let's look what happens here on the right panel uh, once the athlete starts lifting the weight from zero let's say this was position number one and start moving the weight up okay over here in this position we start creating a moment arm which is the perpendicular distance between the resistance and the line that goes through the joint okay so here's my moment arm it's, it's small and it's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and is maximized right here in horizontal not where it is right now but right here in horizontal over here here's the line of the force okay here's the line uh, that crosses the joint and here's the moment arm so the exercise is the hardest here and it's pretty easy down here on, on the low part okay we can understand that small moment arm down here bigger moment arm up there easier down here harder over there so now we have to consider did the muscle in this particular uh, case the deltoid work through its full range of motion in this exercise i you know i think not because of what we talked about about the, uh, about the bottom position of that exercise of the lateral dumbbell raise now we have a different setup now we want to train that muscle the deltoid in that position that it didn't really got trained in the beginning of the previous exercise so now we'll use the, the cable which deflects the force and now the lines of force is this line over here okay this is the line of the force this is the line that crosses the elbow the, the shoulder joint this is the moment arm and you can see that the moment arm is bigger in the bottom position is actually the opposite of the previous one and it's easier it's harder in the bottom position and easier on the top position plus there's something called the, the length tensions uh, relationship of a muscle so over here, the deltoid is a little, it's, it's stretched, it's lengthened. So it's also weaker in this lower point and stronger in the top point. But also the moment arm is important. So if you really want to create the full uh, uh, stimulation for your deltoid, you got to combine those two, those two exercises. And we're going to look at another example that, that kind of um, uh, displayed that, displays that concept. And, you know, we're talking now about full range of motion exercises, okay? And by starting this video, we'll see a very popular exercise, the dumbbell fly, okay? And again, we have the same concept that we had before. On the bottom position over here, there's a big moment arm. And in the middle, as the weight is going up in the middle, the uh, moment arm gets smaller and then it gets almost minimize when we hold the, the dumbbell right across, right on top of the shoulder. Okay, obviously it's a little off here. And again, by definition, we ex we, we don't count any other muscles that, you know, uh, help to bend the elbow a little bit and, and also contribute uh, to the to the moment of the joint, we just take for for um, as as a definition as a as a principle that this segment from the dumbbell to the arm is one rigid segment. Just for the for the um, sake of analysis, okay. Obviously, it's not like that, and human movement is a little more uh, complicated than that. But just just to understand the basic concepts of, of moment arm. So, left picture hard, middle picture easier, uh, right picture practically no uh, no stress so how can we train that 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 part here for of the pec because this is a pec exercise and we can just uh, uh, stress that part of the exercise and one way that you can do it if that you know if this is something that, that is important to you is by placing it uh, this band and complete in the exercise so you obviously you place it on both sides but for sake of display we place one he's holding the the, the band and repeating the exercise through its easiest part. Now, what happens is when the band is creating a force this way, now in the easiest part of the, of the fly, the muscle has to work the hardest because we put an external resistance, but uh, we create an external resistance by this band. And that is a way to, uh, to complete this exercise. And, you know, this is really important, especially in rehab when we want to activate and we want to retrain muscles throughout the whole full range. So this is what, when I say full range of motion uh, training, this is what I mean. Um, this is another popular exercise and we'll see how we can tweak that. And this is 
a classic one being done for warm up, for rehab, for for any any uh, um, you know any times you want to uh, work the external rotators. And here's what happens with this one over here, right at the okay. Let me let me run it a little bit. Okay, we're here. Okay, so external rotation stop. Okay, right here. What is the axis of rotation? against the shoulder joint, okay? Where's the resistance is right here, and here's the moment arm. So in this position right here, yes, the external rotators are fully activated and they work fine. But as the, 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 as the exercise progresses, look what happens at the end, okay? Look how close the band is and what, what, what big difference there is between the center of rotation and the initial position and this position okay now the moment arm is really small and the stress on the external rotators again by definition we just isolate the, this uh, these movements okay just for the sake of the analysis is not that hard okay so how can we make it a little bit harder we can go to the next video and we're working in this effective range and then all we have to do is just turn the athlete a little bit, and again, we create a, a larger moment arm in that weak position. So half here, and if you want to go through the full range of the exercise, you have to turn. And this is the correct way to do it. Also, it has to be done slow because a lot of times the elastic recoil of the band is going to assist the movement and basically take all the, um, you know, all the stress out of the muscle. And um, the exercise then is not that effective. So slow, concentrated, work through the – a full range by tweaking and creating a large moment arm in both positions. Uh, another one that I want to talk about is, is and I see that, that a lot, and um, it, it, this, this type of exercises with the band and the ankle are used a, a, a lot. And there's a, there's a, a couple of problems with this setup right here. Uh, obviously, positive is a little bit exaggerating. You're obviously not working your ankle since you're rotating your, your leg and your knee, but it's something that we all see across the gyms when somebody wants to strengthen the ankle. What is the correct way to do it based on whatever we, we talked about? First of all, when we talk about rehab and especially, uh, you know, ankle rehab, um, we have to be specific. There's a whole bunch of muscles crossing the, those joints and we need to decide in advance which muscles we want to work. And it, because they're positioned differently uh, around the leg, we can't just take the band on top and start moving the ankle. We have to be specific. So in this one, I'm going to display how we can target a very important muscle, the peroneus longus, and really work by using a band. So first thing you got to do is you got to isolate the, uh, kind of isolate the lower leg, get the knee out of the way, you know, know which muscle you want to work. The peroneus longus runs from the side of the, of the uh, fibula, goes behind the lateral malleolus, goes under the foot, and it inserts at the base of the cuneiform and the first metatarsal. And at the ankle joint, it, it plantar flexes the ankle joint and it efforts the subtalar joint. So you got to position the muscle right there so you can make sure that he's, this muscle is the one that's working the most. You're kind of isolating the muscle, putting it in this position. Then you apply the force vertically because what did we say? We said that the, if you apply the force vertically, then the muscle works the most. The, the, actually, you create a larger torque at the center of rotation and the muscle has to work more. Okay, just to oversimplify the terms. And you have to place the band perpendicular. And if you want to keep that resist perpendicular, you got to move with a limp. So plantar flexion, eversion, and the move goes to further eversion and abduction. Okay, so now we're kind of isolating the, the, the peroneus longus. Okay, we got to be really careful of what we're doing and know what we want to do and apply the force from the correct direction. Same goes here. Now this one is for the tibialis anterior, starts from, you know, top of the tibia, goes again on the on the cuneiform of the first metatarsal. And what we're doing now is again, we're using the foot as a liver and the axis of rotation is again the ankle joint and I'm applying a vertical force, okay? Almost vertical force so I can activate the, the um, tibialis anterior. So I'm pushing down Okay. Again, applying a perpendicular um, uh, resistance to the lever and maximizing the activation of the, of the tibialis anterior. Again, every muscle, according to, to its position, must be trained this, uh, by thinking about 
you know, where we need to apply the force, where we need to place the limb in order to activate the muscle and not just mindlessly take the band and start working. Um, a few more examples and, and I'm done. Uh, front squat versus back squat. This is uh, an ongoing debate. Again, moment arms were going to give us the answer. Here's the bar. The bar has to be held uh, in every case. It has to, the, the, the line of the force must pass right in the middle of the foot at the base of support. So either it's back squat or it's a front squat, though the weight must, the, the, the line of the weight must cross right in the middle of the midfoot. So in this, in the left uh, photo, uh, photo like sketch on the back squat, you have to have a position, you have the athlete is positioning its, his, his or her body. Okay, so the, the line is right in the middle of the foot, but the torso is inclined forward. On the front squat, you can see that in order for that to happen, in order for that line to be remaining in the, in the middle, you have to ha keep your torso straight. So look at these angles, the hip angle, the back angle, and the knee angle. Over here, the hip angle is smaller. Over here is bigger. Over here is the opposite. The knee angle is bigger. Here is smaller. Okay. And what does that create? It changes the moment arms. So in the back squat here, the moment arm is bigger. Okay, and the, 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 the moment arm of the knee is smaller. The opposite happens on the, on the front squat. Here's the front squat, the hip angle. The hip, sorry, the hip moment arm, both effective exercises, but you have to think, who are you training and what is the goal? Okay, so if you... In, in the back squat, there's more stress, there's more effort required from the posterior chain, the glutes, the, the, the erector spinner. To achieve. If we want to maximize the force that this athlete will have to exert on the ground, we have to pull at the same directions, direction. If we pull back, then while the athlete is in the air, they must really struggle to, to, to hold their balance, not fall back because we're pulling on the wrong direction. Okay. And this is just a, a depiction of the forces. It's a great research paper. I urge you to read if you're interested in that type of stuff and saying that if you want to move forward, you have to, to, to apply the forces on the ground in the right direction and you have to maximize that horizontal force. It's not the, the scope of this talk, but whoever is interested uh, is kind of explain what we were talking about on, on the previous uh, slides. So to, to sum it up, how can we maximize torque production? We can either increase the load, like put more weight on whatever we're, we're lifting, apply the force perpendicular to the liver, uh, increase the distance of the point of application of the force from the uh, joint axis, right? So we talk about all of these things. And furthermore, think about forces, not how an exercise looks. Don't be based on beliefs and what you like. Analyze. Keep in mind that moment, of iner moment, moment arms as well as inertia will change through an exercise range of motion. So try to think if it's important to load the unloaded parts and if it is, try to find ways of doing it. Find the easiest part of the exercise and load it. Okay, so that's how you will rethink full range of motion exercise. Where is the resistance coming from? We're just not mindless pulling and pushing on, on body parts and bodies. What is actually working? And uh, the basic analysis will, will tell you that. And Definitely coach every set and every rep. Don't just give an exercise to somebody and just say, do it, display it, and let them, let them be. 90% uh, of the program is, uh, the 90% of the success of the program is actually coaching it and making sure that everything is being done perfect. That's why it's not important only what you do, but how you do it. And we are responsible as coaches as to whatever happens in our weight room about exercise technique, exercise safety, and of course, results. And with this, I conclude. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, any correspondence, any questions, you can uh, uh, you know, send me an email, Instagram, whatever we use these days. And I always get back uh, to people. It might be a little bit late uh, because of uh, uh, a lot of work, but I'll always get back to you. All right. Thank you so much for having me and I hope it's going to be a great conference for you.